Hello, and welcome to another video in the Apex SQL Disaster Recovery Series. In this video, we're going to explain and showcase the recovery process for dropped SQL Server scripted based objects, including stored procedures, views, triggers, and many more. Recovery from drop operations is achieved with Apex SQL Log, a SQL Server transaction log reader tool that reads database transaction log files in order to audit results to a comprehensive grid and create recovery scripts for accidental or rogue changes in order to roll any unintentional changes back to the original state. Since Apex SQL Log transforms information from the transaction log files and backups into a readable state and creates recovery scripts based on the information inside the transaction log files, it is important to keep the database in full recovery model. This ensures that the information within the transaction logs is not overwritten on a regular basis, as is the case with a simple recovery model. In order to get started, let's assume that during database maintenance, a user has dropped many different objects that are of no use or value for their database anymore. But in addition, a couple of stored procedures, as well as several views, were dropped by mistake, and now all dropped objects need to be recovered. The database is in the full recovery model, and a full database backup has been created in the meantime, which means that the user will now need to look into the full database backup, which includes transaction log backup, and find the dropped objects. Once Apex SQL Log is started, the connection screen shows the database connection information. It is now required to select the SQL Server instance where the database which requires recovery resides. Select the authentication method and provide credentials. And finally, select a database for recovery from the database drop-down menu. Click on the Next button to advance to the next step. In the next step of the wizard, we will need to provide the transaction log files and backups, which will be audited with Apex SQL Log. Simply click on the Add File button and add specific backup or transaction log files, or click the Add Pattern button and specify the pattern to add multiple files in bulk. Since we have created a full database backup after our objects have been dropped, let's add that backup as a data source. Check it and uncheck the online transaction log file, since it holds information on transactions that have occurred after the full database backup, which are of no relevance for our recovery. In the following step of the wizard, we can opt to create an undo-redo script to directly recover dropped objects. The other option is to open auditing results in the grid, where they can be further inspected, filtered, and investigated. Since in our case, there are multiple objects and object types which we need to recover, and there were also other object drops that were proper and correct, let's opt for the option to open results in grid in order to more easily track the objects for recovery. The next step of the wizard allows us to filter out the auditing results. The more filters that are added, and with as much precision as possible, the cleaner the auditing results will be, which will make the job of isolating incorrectly dropped objects much easier. First, let's specify the date time filter by providing the specific time frame when the drop object operations have occurred. Next, in the Operations Filter tab, uncheck All DML Changes and then locate and check drop procedure and drop view operation. Other filters can be used in addition to time and operations filters to further narrow down the results, including users filter, server process ID, as well as the transaction description filters. Now that we've provided full input information, let's click on the Finish button to complete the auditing wizard. After several moments, Apex SQL Log will complete the auditing job and show the results in a grid. Here, as previously mentioned, we can further filter down the results by utilizing the grid filters, or check the operations details and transaction information for each operation shown to get an in-depth insight into each operation. When we locate the objects that were incorrectly dropped, simply check each of them to prepare them for recovery. Once this is completed, click the Undo button in the main application ribbon and Apex SQL Log will generate a recovery script which rolls back all marked changes. The recovery script is automatically opened in the internal editor by default, and users can browse it and make any changes if required. 
Once this is done, click on the Connect button. Choose a SQL Server instance, Authentication Method and Credentials, and choose a database where the script will be executed and click Connect. Finally, click on the Execute button. An Apex SQL log will run the script against the database to roll back drop operations and recover lost objects. Once the processing is done, and the application notifies us of a successfully completed recovery, we can check the database for the dropped objects and confirm that they were successfully restored. There is no limit to the number of objects that can be recovered here, and, as we've seen, different objects can be recovered at once by following a simple wizard through Apex SQL Log, and executing the recovery script against our database. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit apexsql.com.